All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to be working on a problem where the parking brake lamp is out, as you can see. So it should be coming on when we do the lamp test. The only thing that's coming on is the anti-lock brake one next to it. So we're going to go diagnose that problem today and show you how to track that down. All right, here's our schematic for this guy. He's pretty simple. So we've got the gauges fuse. We've got a pink circuit 39 that comes down into the instrument cluster. There's our park brake warning lamp that is currently not working. We've got a tan white wire on circuit 33 that goes to, of all, all things, the daytime running lamps module. Now, who would have thought that was involved with this component? And then this guy is a purple and white that goes down to the parking brake light switch itself. So that's all there is to the circuit. We got the switch on the parking brake. We've got this module. We've got the bulb and we've got power. It's pretty simple. So let's go through the diagnostic. Right, so locating some of the components underneath the dash area here, obviously here's the accelerator pedal. We're gonna pan over this way right here in the back. So here's your emergency brake assembly. Right here, there's the pedal. And there's the piece that it mounts onto. And right back there in the back is the emergency brake switch, with that light blue wire coming out of it. Now the daytime running lamp module is very close to that, at least it is on the Suburban model. I would assume it's very similar in others. If we just tilt right up here, we can see this little gray box here. This little gray box is the daytime running lamp module. There's a little circuit board inside here, and it's all taped up in the back where the harness is. So I just want to show you the location. It's uh, In this case, it's right below the bracket that's holding the supplemental inflatable reef restraint module, the airbag module. So we're going to get this guy out of here so we can start doing some of the tests that we were going over in the service manual. All right, I couldn't get you guys up here with me to get this box out um, because there's just no room at all. But what you have to do is there's this little guy here that you're going to want to pinch with a pick or a pair of pliers and pop him out of the bracket. And then once he's out of the bracket, there's this little foam washer that we can take off and work that around so it doesn't break. And then we'll be able to get this little metal bracket that's holding the uh, module, the gray module on the side away from this connector here. And we'll be able to get the tape unwrapped and see what the connectors look like. All right, guys, just showing you a progress report here. So, you know, we've peeled back the black tape in here so that we can see that we've got the right guy. Get some of this out of the way for you. And so we see that we do have two blue wires, a pink, a couple of yellows, a couple of tan and whites, a couple of greens, and a black. So that does kind of match what we saw in the service manual. Let's just go take a look and uh, confirm. All right, taking a look at the daytime running lamp control module. There's all of our labeled ports. There's the two blues coming from the parking brake switch signal input. The pink is our ignition one voltage. Um, the pink black is only used on the Z56 RPO. Yellow is the headlight headlamp switch output. And then we've got a park lamp feed, which is the tan white on port E. And we got a DRL lamp feed, which is on F. There's the light green and black, which is the DRL, DRL relay output. And then black is the ground. So we're only going to be concerned with E, A, and B on this diagnosis. So let's go ahead and start working our way through the tree. All right, here's like a picture of what this thing looks like. Here's the connector to the switch that's on the park brake assembly. I'll show you what this looks like underneath in just a moment. And then we've got this blow up of what that single wire connector looks like. They tell you it's a light blue in color. And then they've got this diagnostic system check. It's pretty simple, right? Put the ignition switch in the run position, depress the parking brake. And then they ask you, does the light come on? If it does not, then you go to the do not light diagnostic, which is right here on the next page. Was the diagnostic check performed? Yes. Go to step two, place the ignition in the run position, disconnect the DRL module, and back probe with the voltmeter between cavity C and ground and see if the voltage that you see is 12 volts. If it is, you know, go to the next step. If not, go to the next step. So let's go do that first test. All right, guys, for these next tests that are coming up, we're going to have to remove the DRL module from this plastic housing it's in. You'll see there's a little latch here. Let's take a small flathead screwdriver, pop that loose, 
And inside here is a circuit board. And it's very much like one of these old school video game cartridges. It just has a card edge connector that slides in here. Just got to get it wiggled out. Just going to try and do it with my finger here. But she's in there pretty tight. So I'm going to take a type of pliers that have no teeth, right? Very flat. Let's see if we can grab it this way and extract this guy very gently. She's slowly coming off. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm going to damage a component here. You can see there's a small hole right here. I don't know if we can zoom in enough to see that. It's a small hole right there. What I'm going to try and do is put a pick in there and see if we can get that because I don't want to damage this board extracting it just to do these tests. There we go. All right, that's the way to do it. And there she is. You can see, like I said, it's got like a, a card edge connector, like an old school video game. And there's the part number right there on the back, 12135174. All right, so one of the things we'll do is we'll deoxid these connectors, but we're going to go ahead and take this off for the next part of the testing, like the manual suggests. I'm going to suggest you also keep this little door closed during that testing, just so it doesn't break off. All right, guys, let's do this test now. I'm going to put the uh, key in the run position. And we're going to run from the pink wire on the DRL module over to ground. And we're getting just under 12 volts. It's getting pulled down because this guy's running through the glow plug cycle. But we've got battery voltage, so this test is passing. All right, we got our 12 volts there, and we really weren't surprised not to because the daytime running lamps are working. So we're going to go to step three. So step three. Ignition is going to be off. Parking brake is going to be applied. Again, with the DRL module connected, we're going to bat probe continuity between cavity A and ground, and we're going to verify that that is a good ground. All right, folks, let's put it back in for this next test. Just going to reopen our little box. Like I said, I I gave it uh, a shot of deoxid. You know, you never know. You might get lucky, and it's just a connection problem. I doubt it, though. But, and we're just going to slide it back in. Get it to plug back in the connectors. Like that. Seal it back up. Let's do the next test. All right, guys, for this next test, we've got the module plugged back in the little guy here, box. And we're going to do a continuity test sure we got tone. We're going to run from pin A, which is the light blue. And we're just going to touch it to frame ground. Make sure we're making contact here. Yeah, almost. You hear a tone out there. My finger keeps slipping. Sorry about that, guys. Yep, we're getting tone on that. Just for grins, we'll try the second one as well, just for the other circuit, but just while we're here. All right, so we got tone there. That test passed. No surprise. All right, again, we weren't surprised that this test passed because if it didn't, we probably wouldn't have our DRLs working. All right, so we did have continuity, so we go to step four. Disconnect the parking brake warning switch connector and connect it voltmeter and do a continuity test between the pins of the switch and ground and see if we have continuity there. All right, so for this next test, we've pulled the lead off of the parking brake switch. We've got the meter in continuity mode, so we can tone it out. And then we're going to come over here, and hopefully I won't knock you guys. We're going to make contact with the parking brake switch and the frame ground up here. That tones out, so that works out okay too. That test passed. OK, 
Okay, no surprise that that test also passed. And again, because our DRL lights would probably not be working if there was a problem with the parking brake warning switch. So the next step, we go to step five, put the ignition in the run, apply the brake, and now they want us to back probe cavity eight of the instrument cluster in ground. So at this point, we're going to have to take the dash trim off and get the instrument cluster out. All right, the first step to getting access to the instrument cluster, we got to get this outer trim panel off. If you've never done that on one of these OB, old body style trucks, let me show you what you need to do. First thing I recommend you do is pop open the cup holder here to give you some slack here. Pop your keys in. Pull the shifter all the way down into first. And then take your tilt lever if you have it and put it all the way down. That's going to give you enough clearance to get this out. Then just use a trim tool and just slowly work these clips off. If you come up on top here, you can see what I'm talking about, these little metal clips like this. I'm just going to work that all the way around, and then I'll come back and show you how to disconnect some of these switches. All right, guys, once you pull this dash piece off, there's really not a whole lot to uncooking these different connectors. They're mostly all the push-in type. I'm going to do this when I show you what I'm talking about, but there is one that I want to show you up close here. So just going to get the screwdriver... I'm using a flathead screwdriver. You can also use a pick, given the tight spaces here. But you know, all you're doing is you're trying to depress connectors like this. The hard one is this guy here. You can see he's got like a like a crown type shape to him. What you want to do on this one though is you want to come in with the screwdriver underneath here while pushing down on it. And that is the trick to getting this type out. You can see, even while I'm trying to explain it to you, it's fighting with me. But the deal with this guy is, it's not just pushing down. There's also this little ridge that you've got to clear in order to get it off. And that's going to be found on these connectors shaped like this, like the rear hatch, um, the rear cargo light, uh, maybe the utility switch on some 3500s, anything that has this kind of rocker switch like this, this momentary rocker switch is going to have that kind of a connector. The rest of the stuff is pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and get it disconnected and pulled right. off. With the trim piece out of the way and the harness connections to the switches on the trim piece off, the only thing left holding this gauge cluster in are these 7 millimeter bolts. There's two on each side. You can see the two that's here. You can see one maybe right up there, and then there's another one buried under here. You have to lift up these cables and come in straight under here. Pull those four seven millimeter bolts out and you'll be able to remove the instrument cluster and start the test. All right, once we got this out, obviously I wouldn't be doing this video if this was the problem, but it's the first thing you want to check and that's the bulb. And so each of these little gray guys are going to be the bulbs for the indicator lamps. The black ones are the illumination lamps. Just take a small wrench. I'm going to use this tiny crescent wrench here. And you just want to twist this guy counterclockwise. And that'll pull out this little small mini bulb. And you can go test this guy separately on the bench. If, the, if this has got a problem, these little bulbs come out of here just like a 194 type bulb. I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to have some on hand. But that's all it is. The connector's reusable. The bulbs are replaceable. That's the first thing you should check. I've already done that. That's not the case. And so we're going to continue on with what the real problem is. All right, so if we look at the service manual and we look at the pinout, for the instrument cluster. There's 32 connections and they run them across these two pages. And you can see in the picture they show it starting at 1, 2, 3 and ending at 31, 32 over here on the left. Now you gotta remember the orientation of this though is from the perspective of the instrument cluster, right? So now we've removed the instrument cluster. If we take a look at that and we look on the back, what we can see here is here's pin 32 in this upper left corner and here's pin one in this lower right corner right so if we take a look at that so when this plugs in that's not what you're looking at with the male connector it's from the perspective of what we'll call the female connector here so one on the lower right 32 in the upper left and so if you were to try and gauge what you're looking at here that doesn't look anything like you know what we've got going on here right so when we plug this in Got to just think about the orientation spatially here, right? When we plug this in, 32 is actually going to be in the upper right on the dash, and pin 1 is going to be on the lower left on the dash. 
And you can see that neither of those perspectives apply to this drawing. So, you know, just keep that in mind, right? Because what you're looking at on the drawing really is the perspective coming from behind the dash. Right? So just I hope that makes sense to you, but just keep in mind pin one in the lower right you see here and pin 32 in the upper left that you see here when we flip it around and plug it in those are going to flip you'll see it when we take a look at the connector what's important here is to look at the wiring um, numbers so the ones we're going to be concerned with are pin 4 which is black and white which is a 451 circuit ground and pin 31 which is same thing just in a different place on the second row so 31 and 4 are the grounds 28 is the tan white that drives the brake warning indicator lamp output and you can see in the service manual before it said pin 8 it's cavity 8 rather it's wrong it should say cavity 28 that's a typo so this is the guy that we're going to be testing in conjunction with either 4 or uh, 31 and just because it's closer we're going to be working with 31 so we'll be using 31 to do these tests when we get to that point all right guys with the instrument cluster removed like we were showing before so pin 32 is right here and pin 1 is right down here so you can see it's kind of catty corner to what you would expect and it doesn't line up at all to what you see in the service manual the service manual is not giving you this perspective so just keep that in mind first thing we're going to want to do for this test is we're going to want to pull this mail piece out of the dash a little bit so just take a small plastic tool on either end and just gently get these little clips on each side released. You don't want to break them. I'll let you pull this guy out and this way we'll be able to validate the wire color on both the top and the bottom and we'll be able to probe everything that the service manual is requesting us to probe. Alright now that we've got this typo cleared up and we understand what we're doing this next test they want us to place the ignition in the run position apply the parking brake and back probe between cavity 28 of the instrument cluster and ground and then they want us to check if voltage is present and then depending on whether it is or isn't we'll go to the next step alright so for this first test they want us to do here they're going to want us to do a voltage test on pin 28 now we got that typo cleared up and so pin 28 is going to be coming off the top here so we've got 32 31 30, 29, 28. This guy here that's tan and white. So when we put the ignition in the run position, we're going to want to check this guy here. So he's the one, two, three, four, fifth pin over. We're going to want to check him against ground. So we're basically just going to run the voltmeter from this pin here and this pin here, number 31, which is our ground line. Just go ahead and put the key in the run position. And let's see if we get any voltage on this test. I suspect that we will not. So ground on pin 31, positive on pin 28, and we've got nothing. We've just got noise on the voltmeter. Let me see if I can move my hand out of the way so you guys can see. So no battery voltage on that test. So that test failed. All right, so this test failed, so they're telling us to go to step 11 when that happens. So that's going to take us up to the top part of the other page here. And step 11 says disconnect the DRL module connector, and then we're going to go from cavity E also to this cavity 28. So cavity E of the DRL to cavity 28 of the instrument cluster. We're going to check and see if there's continuity there. We basically want to see is the wire intact from the DRL module up to the connector on the instrument. Alright folks, got a helper holding one end of our line on pin 28 and then we're going to come in here on the DRL module. We're going to come in on the tan and white. Right. We're going to make sure that we've got continuity. We've got tone, and just to be sure, we're going to check both of these. All right, so that is not the problem. The line is not broke. So let's go back and continue with the next step of the test. All right, guys, that test passed. So we got a yes, continuity is present. Go to step 12, and there's our diagnosis. Replace the DRL module. Who would have thought that that would have anything to do with the parking brake lamp? 
So we're going to go ahead and pull that board out of that little gray box and we'll make this repair and we'll see if that actually is the problem. All right, so taking a look at our old board, guys, you know, it's it's very simple board. It's only single sided. There's not many components on here. Some surface mount resistors, some surface mount capacitors. Um, this little guy here, not sure what he is, but he's definitely not anything intelligent. So there's no programming on this module. There's nothing that has to be learned. They're all plug and play. But with the module burned out, for whatever reason, on that one particular uh, function that it had of lighting up stuff on the dash, we're going to replace it with a new 12135174. You can see inside there's just another one of these little boards. Now, they don't make these anymore. These have been discontinued for a long time. So you have to hunt down tracking them to find one. Uh, there is a couple of companies that remanufacture these, and I presume they go through and figure out which of these components is burned out and replace it. And I'll put a link to one of the companies that still seems to do that for these old body style trucks in the description along with this replacement one. But let's go ahead and get our new board installed and see if it cures our problem. All right, guys, we've got our module reinstalled back in its original home. Just make sure when you get to the point of pushing this guy in, you want to make sure that at the very top here, to get you a view of it yeah right there he is you want to make sure at the top here that you got this little clip pushed in all the way and the prongs have relatched also make sure you use that little white foam washer it cuts down on vibration noise all right let's see if we've got it and yes we do so we can see now that our parking brake lamp is illuminated correctly if we let go of the parking brake, it goes off. We put the parking brake, it comes on. And more importantly, that I didn't notice at the beginning of the video, if we release the parking brake, our DRL green indicator over there on the left is correctly functioning as well. So that's it, guys. We got that fixed. Uh, we didn't really expect it to be what it turned out to be, but we got it fixed. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them below, and I'll try to help. If this video helped you solve your problem or taught you something or you just found it entertaining, pay it forward and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.